Folks, I'm starting out this video behind this backhoe for a good reason. It's because I'm trying to take cover in case the finance committees across America start firing. Maybe this steel will protect me. Today we're going to be installing this thumb. Hydraulic thumb on a 260B backhoe. Same thumb fits the 270B and 370B backhoes. Now a quick link to pick up this thumb is available at greenpartsstore.com slash TTWT right there on our featured products page. And like all Green Parts Store products, you get free shipping. The shipping just from Illinois to Indiana was going to be $120 on this thing. The free shipping is amazing. This product isn't cheap, but everybody that has a thumb brags on it. And that's a mechanical thumb. This one is hydraulic. Special thanks to AHW LLC, uh, greenpartsstore.com, for providing the thumb and, well, helping us get started with it. Here's the tools we'll use in this project. Here are all the parts included in the kit, and here's all the hardware that was in the bag. Got to start by removing this bolt that holds the main pivot pin. It's a bit of a mess, so I'm going to use some WD-40 Specialist Rust Release Penetrant Spray. Hopefully it'll be easier to get loosened up. I've lowered the boom right here. It doesn't have any pressure on it. See, I can pick it up, but it is sitting on the ground. That way there won't be anything fall when I remove this pin. Got my shop towel over here. I've got a large blunt punch here and my hammer. You say, why did you have a shop towel? Well, I had a shop towel because if you do your greasing at all, there should be grease on that pin. That's probably the most critical greasing point on a backhoe is this pin right here, because that's where it does all the pivoting. These two have all the pressure. Okay, since that's sitting there perfectly, I think we're ready for the next step. Okay, hopefully everything is still sitting, so this will be a perfect fit. I don't know, I've bounced it around a little bit, so it might not be. We'll give it a little tap tap and see. This was the blunt drift punch that I used to drive out the pin. I'm going to use a narrower drift punch to help line up that hole. That's one great purpose of a drift punch, is to line up a hole. And then we'll put our bolt right back in. Use a 9 16 end wrench and socket this time to tighten it back up. There's our first clue. Okay, for the next step, we're going to put some fittings on this cylinder. I'm actually using this shop towel to cover up the vise because I'm embarrassed at, uh, you know, how wimpy it is. No, I, I thought it might protect the paint a little bit. Okay, I've got a pair of pliers here. These are little, just plastic plugs. They've been painted over so they look like they were, you know, more substantial than they are. But they were plenty good enough for their intended use, which was to keep dirt out of this while it's transporting. This is a, the fittings that they gave us to go in there. Okay, we'll do the second one. This is a three quarter inch wrench. They say to torque them to 27 foot pounds. Well, I don't have the ability to do that, but I'm almost a foot long and I can estimate 27 pounds pretty well. Now, the truth is, it's an O-ring fitting. So if you notice, when I go in, it goes in really smooth, really easy, and then it's tight, right? So it's, there's not much difference. When it's tight, it's tight. Okay, so the next step is to hang this cylinder in here. The action part of the cylinder, the ram, needs to come out at the bottom. It's very important because the cylinder ports are at different heights. Now, in the instructions, it specifically says that it may not fit. If the cylinder does not fit between the protrusions, it may be necessary to spread the sides of the arm slightly. So I'm going to use this, hopefully, to do just a little bit of spreading. And it hopefully won't take much. It would be easier with another person, that's for sure. Christy, where are you when I need you? We are started. Let me get the actual hammer. You know, the funny thing is I knew this would be tight because it doesn't even ask me to pin this at the end of the step. We don't put the pin in until we get these additional plates put on in the next step. So I knew it was gonna be tight. 
Hope you can see where I'm hitting there. Looks like it's going to sit there just like the instructions implied. Install cylinder plates A on the backhoe arm and secure with clevis pin C and cotter pin. The 260B uses this top mounting hole. The 270 and 370B use this bottom mounting hole. From the thumb perspective, the actual mechanical part of the thumb, that appears to be the only difference in the installation. We'll see about the hydraulics. There'll probably be other differences there. I suspect the arm on the 260B is narrower than the 270B narrower this way. So that's why they have that second mounting hole. So, and we're putting the washer on the bolt side. As the nut, in addition to being a lock nut, it has a big flange on it. Okay, so we're going to tighten these. Three quarter inch. It's fine threaded, so it'll take several turns. I may have to come back and adjust this. I don't know. But there was a good bit of slack in there as I was tightening it. Uh, but they said to go ahead and tighten it up. I'll just tighten it up for now. And I'll see where it ends up. I think I may have put the cylinders on wrong. Uh, it said note cylinder port orientation when installing the, with the clamp on side plates. Yeah, well, I tried to take note, but I didn't do it well. I started not to actually bend this cotter pin because I figured I'd do it wrong. I need these ports on the front side. Now the cylinder ports are oriented properly. It was in the instructions. I even read it. I even tried to pay attention. Okay, now we got to install this grommet. They only gave us one grommet, so they said to install it on the right side. I hope this is the right side. Okay, just for complete documentation, for the 260B, I had to install my cylinder up here between these, as they call them, protrusions on the backhoe. For the 270 and 370B with the slightly longer arm, I would estimate five inches longer arm, the cylinder actually gets installed down here. So you won't have some of that pain there. You won't have to fit that cylinder in between the protrusions. You can just put your cylinder right here, pin it, and go on. Okay, that's all the mechanical installation here for now. We'll actually connect this cylinder to the thumb in the very last step. So yeah, I'm eager to see it too. Okay, the next step is to prepare this valve assembly. No matter which model, we need to put plugs in this right-hand side. There we go. Again, these are all O-ring fittings. So finger tight's good enough. No, finger tight's not good enough. But we'll get them tighter in a minute. For all models, we have right angle fittings on this other side. We'll tighten them here in a minute. Using this orientation again, the top port here in front gets a right angle fitting. Again, no matter which model. Okay, and here's what's different. For a 270 and 370, you'll put a right angled fitting in here. But for a 260, we put a straight fitting in here. 260B, that is. I think it's really neat that the same kit will fit 260B, 270B, and 370B. If you haven't heard of the 370B, that's the backhoe for the 3E series starting in 2018. And I do not believe that prior models will support the backhoe. If you want a backhoe for your 3E, you'll have to trade for a new 3E. This one is 11 16 So it shows them angled like this. That will be very important. This is back to our three quarters. The actual elbows, a 11 16 the orientation is slightly different on this one for a 260 versus a 270B. I had some trouble deciding which one to install it on, but I decided that you guys would be most excited to see it operate on the 260B. I think there's a lot more 260Bs sold than 270Bs, at least that would be my guess, mainly because of price. Okay, the next step is to remove this little bracket here that holds the SMV emblem. This is the point where they want to make sure the backhoe boom is on the ground and that there's no pressure on these. There's not much pressure on them, but I will run the valves around just to make sure. You know, anytime you can move it like that, you know you don't have much pressure. For this particular operation, it's probably not critical that the pressure be off, but we'll be disconnecting some hoses here in a few minutes. And for that, yeah, we will want the pressure uh, relieved. A carriage bolt under there, so you have to hold it up with your fingers which makes it a little awkward. I can't reach it from this side. 
for a lot of you, this is embarrassingly simple because you've heard it all your life, but I apologize because some of you are new to tractors and are new to mechanical equipment at all. Uh, a carriage bolt has a rounded head like this and a little square piece right here. And that square indention uh, just below the bolt head um, allows the bolt to fit into a squared hole and keep from turning. This allows you to tighten a nut on it without having to hold the other side. Okay, So that's called a carriage bolt. One other thing on bolts, if you go to the store, they are sized based on the diameter of the bolt. It has nothing to do with the size of the nut. For instance, this one takes a 9 16 socket, but it's not a 9 16 bolt, it's a 3 8 bolt. Once you get used to this, you'll see some consistency in the sizing. 3 8 bolts typically use 9 16 wrenches. Here's the new brackets. The instructions say to reuse the same bolts and nuts. Starting to rain again in Indiana. Here we go, we'll tighten this up. This bracket is actually slotted, whereas the other one just had fixed holes. You have to push that carriage bolt head up in there to get caught in that slot. And naturally that gets me caught down in the grease. Guten tight. Okay, now we'll take the SMV receiver off of this old green bracket. We're gonna salvage the little receiver portion, but the green bracket is no longer necessary. Okay, here's the new piece. Make sure I get it oriented properly. This is a great place for those carriage head bolts. See, it allows the SMV emblem to slide in there without hitting a hex head bolt. Now we've got this other piece, the valve bracket. So we're gonna fasten these two together right here. And we've got short carriage bolts for that, I believe. Okay, two different holes. For the 270 and 370, we would want it up here. For the 260, we want it down here. I probably just need to wear one of these on my back all the time, right? This step may require three or four hands. I've got to put this bracket and this valve on to this bracket all at the same time. I want the knob facing upward. We've got these two little holes right here. We've got two pairs of holes here, but we want to mount them in the rightmost pair so they line up. I mean, we could put them over here, but that wouldn't look quite right. So we'll put them over here. Now, the documentation says a carriage bolt. It is not a carriage bolt. It is a regular hex head bolt. Also, the documentation says one washer only on the head side. They supplied four 3 8 washers, it looked like, for, and we, these are the last of the 3 8 bolts. So I'm pretty sure I'm supposed to use washers on both sides here. Worst case, I encounter another need for a 3 8 washer, and I'll use my own. All right. Got the second bolt in. Okay, things are beginning to come together here. We have the mechanical part of the thumb mostly installed down there. Now we have this valve assembly installed up here. I think we have only one major step left and that's connecting all the hydraulics. Okay folks, we're gonna start the hydraulic portion. This is probably the most complex portion of the install. It's not that there's really any complexity, it's just figuring out which parts to use. The instructions aren't incredibly clear. First thing we're gonna do is remove this little U-shaped hard line and we're gonna insert connectors in between each of those. It's three quarters on the cylinder side or hose side here and 13 sixteenths on the hard line side. Now anytime you start to work with hydraulics you need to have a, well, I don't guess you need to, but it's probably nicer to have a uh, shop towel handy because there will be some spill. Now this is an O-ring face seal connection, which just seems to be pretty standard connection that Deere uses at least. I'm going to put the T on this side. That took me a little bit of effort to figure out which T I needed, but this is the only T that they shipped with quantity two, and I believe that's the one I need to be using. On the other side, we're going to use a union. This part's as simple as Lego blocks, right? You can tell whether it's going to fit or not. Now this same hard line should fit because presumably we've added the same length, uh-oh, to both. Maybe not quite the same length, right? We'll loosen this a little bit, shove a little more hose down. We got her started here. There we go, we've got the union in, got the T in. Okay, this was a challenge. Not an install challenge, just a little bit of a mental challenge to figure out. I have three hoses in the kit that have a right angle open face on one end and a straight open face on the other. 
The only difference is length. And there's no real way to tell in the instructions which one goes where. The hose we're supposed to install now goes from this port right here to this port right here. I'm going to make the assumption that the shortest hose in our kit is the correct hose. And if I'm wrong, I'll just be doing it again. If I find a need for a shorter hose in another scenario, then I will be doing it again, right? It's fairly important to get these open face o-ring fittings good and flat because I've seen them leak, at least on Johnny 5 at times. These hose fittings are 7 8 and the other piece here is 11 16 three quarters there to hold against 7 8 Okay, the next hose goes from the rod end, they call it, of the cylinder up to this port. So the first thing we'll do is get, disconnect this rod end. 7 8 again, three quarters again. This one will leak. We've got a T to put in here. So where the other O's was a little bit too short and had to be pulled in a little bit more, this one's a little bit too long and it's going to have to be pulled out somehow. We also have to put a 90 degree fitting right here to point this hose upward. Now we need a hose from here to here. I'm going to use the second to the shortest one for this one. No, I have no other way to identify. Hey Chris, you want to come over and hold this hose while I tighten it? Hold it right down there just like that. Against the other hose, grab them together, there you go. I want to make sure you smell like hydraulic oil for our date on Saturday night. Yeah, that's kind of what I was thinking. I what? probably smell like grass, I've been weed eating. Okay, that's tight. Okay, that should take care of these two. We got two more hoses to put on. I'm gonna guess that the rod end of the cylinder, which is the bottom end of the cylinder, is the longest hose. And the rod end of the cylinder goes into the bottom port here. Since this has straight on both ends, I should be able to tighten that. And yes, I did figure out the grommet was on the wrong side before. So yeah, it was. I had to do it over just as I predicted. You can't tell my right from my left, come on. All we're doing here is installing the hose clamp. It's nice to get these hoses corralled. Oftentimes when you have add-ons, they're not maybe as well thought through as what the factory uh, parts are. In this case, it may be a little different because it is a deer part and so they probably put more thought into it than some third party parts. But it's always a challenge. That's that. We'll see if we have enough hose on the inside. Okay, now we're gonna connect these hoses to the cylinder. I believe the manual suggested connecting the top one first. Now I really wanted to try to go ahead and connect this pin during the first step. I don't know, it just would have made it feel complete, but I'm glad I didn't because being able to move this cylinder has made hose installation easier. Now I can tighten this in at the top. Okay, folks, we are getting there. Put the bolt in there, the nut on it right here. That's a lock nut, there's two washers. The bolt head is an inch and an eighth. The nut is an inch and a sixteenth. The last item is the decals. Before I pick up any tools or anything else, I'm gonna test it just to see if we have any leaks. Okay, leak inspection time. None there. Oh, is there any there? No, don't believe there's one there. Ah, I may have one right there. Yep, there's one that wasn't tight. Okay, that looks good. I learned this from my John Deere mechanic friend when he was out to work on Johnny 5 the other day just to do a little warranty items. And uh, I had a hydraulic leak on it, and after he fixed it, he wanted to test it. So he used some electrical contact cleaner. This is WD-40 Specialist Electrical Contact Cleaner Spray. And he just sprayed it on the areas real liberally that had oil on them from the previous leaks. And he said that that would wipe up that oil, soak up that oil, I don't know, that's not a technical term. Yeah, it just dries it up, wow, it really does. And then we can test again. Yeah, that stuff's gonna be wonderful. Because it's always hard to know if you fixed a hydraulic leak. And he said this stuff gets rid of the oil so that it, if there's you know, new oil comes back, you can easily see it. WD-40 Specialist Electrical Contact Cleaner Spray. BEA Beautiful. So this thumb does not have an independent control. It doesn't have a total third function for the thumb. Rather, it's controlled by the curl and dump of the bucket. There's also a little valve up here that we have to put on. 
that allows you to totally disable the thumb. So you pull it up into the fully parked upright position, then you push this down, and then you can operate the bucket normally without the thumb interfering. If you're doing a trench or project where you don't want any thumb, that's how you'd use it. I'll show it to you just a little bit here, just to whet your appetite. But actual use of it, we're going to have to put off till another episode. I do have a plan. I've got a tree right out here that needs to come out, but you'll just have to come back for a later episode to get that. Let's see it work. Now the thumb is disabled at this point, so the bucket works just normally, just like you would expect. Now, if I enable the thumb by pulling this lever, when I dump, when the bucket gets all the way dumped, the thumb opens. As I curl, once I get to a certain point here, it pushes back. And if I keep curling, the thumb pushes the bucket open again. I'm not sure that would matter. I don't know yet. We'll have to see how that works in practice. I'll dump it all the way open. Then I'll disable it by pushing it. There we go. Okay, everybody. If you have finance committee approval, greenpartstore.com slash TTWT. It's right there on the featured products page. Fits the 260B, 270B, 370B. That's the backhoe for the 3E. Check out our website, tractortimewithtim.com for more details on this installation. And we'll see you next time on Tractor Time with Tim. You know, I think attachments are kind of addictive. So maybe I should say like the other addictive substances out there when they advertise, maybe I should say, please buy attachments responsibly. Nah. Buy them all. If the cylinder does, doggone mosquitoes, not gonna get away with that. If this, that was like using a sledgehammer for a mosquito, wasn't it? It was kinda like that, wasn't it?